in theory, if we can make a whole ton of energy in Africa using solar panels, we can ship that energy away to other countries. But here's the thing. How do we get it from one place to another? Well, we use subsea interconnectors. The world's longest land and subsea interconnector just came online. Here are the details. Here's how these kinds of mammoth projects actually work. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans. You're watching The Electric Viking. Great to see you. 2024, it's going to be an amazing year. We're here. It's there. Happy New Year. I hope you had an amazing 2024. I really think it's going to be such a sensational year with so many solar projects, so many battery projects, so many wind projects going in worldwide. A lot of people believe we're being too pessimistic, that we should focus on what is happening rather than what isn't happening. This is something that is most certainly happening. The world's longest land and subsea interconnector between the UK and Denmark, and there is one, by the way, between Northern Africa and Europe as well, started commercial operations. The new Viking Link electricity interconnector has a capacity of 1.4 gigawatts and stretches for 475 miles under the land and sea. So it doesn't just go under the sea, it also goes underneath the land. It joins the Bicker Fen substation in Lincolnshire with the Rev Singh substation in southern Jutland in Denmark. High wind generation outputs in the UK and Denmark, especially offshore, happen simultaneously. So surplus energy will need to be transmitted through the connector to where the level of demand is highest. This is something that's being done in many countries. These kinds of scenarios where we send energy from one place to another, when there's more energy for whatever reason, it could be there's lots of wind in one place, one country, there's lots of sun at another time in one country. So they kind of share energy. And these sorts of projects actually are easier than they sound. In fact, one huge one just came online in Australia. But getting back to this project, this $2.2 billion project is a joint venture between the UK's National Grid and Danish National Transmission System Operator, EnergyNet. National Grid says that the world's longest land and subsea interconnector can transport enough electricity for up to 2.5 million UK homes, bringing over 500 million pounds or 637 million US dollars of cumulative savings for UK consumers over the next decade, thanks to cheaper imported power from Denmark. London's Oxford University, or Oxford's Oxford University, I should say, has predicted the world is likely to save $10 trillion if we fast forward projects like this, if we fast forward our wind, solar, and battery system installations, and also these kinds of systems, which can enable us to, well, obviously reduce our power costs. Viking Link will be operating at a capacity at the start of 800 megawatts, increasing over time to 1.4 gigawatts this year. In its first year of operation, Viking Link is expected to save around 600,000 tons of carbon emissions, equivalent to removing nearly 300,000 cars from the road. That's, uh, that's pretty damn awesome. Katie Jackson, who is the president of National Grid Ventures, which runs National Grid's interconnected business, said this, as we deploy more wind power to meet our climate and energy security targets, connections to our neighboring countries will play a vital role, increasing the security of supply and reducing prices for consumers. Stretching further across land and sea than any of our existing links, it connects the UK to clean, green Danish energy, improving security of supply and bringing huge carbon and cost savings for UK consumers in particular, but also, of course, for consumers in Denmark as well. When it came to construction of Viking Link Electric, says that Prismian Group manufactured the HVDC offshore cable and they laid the cable on the seabed, uh, basically like a custom-made boat slash submarine. It's called the Leonardo da Vinci, and it was buried using ASO trenches. So lots of really new technology here, which, of course, now that these, these facilities have been manufactured, now that these tools have been manufactured, we can use them in the future to more cost-effectively build similar transmission links, such as the transmission links sending power from Northern Africa to Europe, mountains of solar power. Prismian Group also manufactured the HVDC LAN cable and Balfour Beatty installed it in the UK. 
Earlier this year, National Grid announced plans with Dutch transmission system operator Tenet for a new 1.8 gigawatt interconnector between the UK and the Netherlands called LionLink. It's expected to come online in probably the early 2030s. So lots of these transmission links will come online all over the world. We'll have the ability to send power, renewable energy, from one place to another really, really quickly using these transmission links. What this means is that the more grid interconnections we see on a larger scale all over the world, well, it'll mean that you know when one place has a whole lot of power, it could be from massive winds, like today, for example, here where I live, it was insanely windy. It was blowing the sand right into my face, perfect for offshore wind turbines. However, on other days when there's just a whole lot of sun in lots of places, you can send that sun to the place where there may not be wind today. So the best way I see these kinds of interconnector grid links being installed is this, summer or winter for north-south connections. One place is in winter, one place is possibly in summer, uh, possibly scenarios where they can just share energy constantly and kind of complement each other. This is the great renewable energy. You can actually use all that excess power simply by sending it to one of your neighbors very quickly. That's what actually happens now in many places around the world. Thank you for watching.